from my audience. <laughs> so equal parts of both is my goal. So um, here's an outline. I won't read it. Um, so just to start in a general way, we live in an analog fractional world. Oh, that's probably true. Um, and we're in a controls lab. So uh, as you probably come to understand, at least I believe this fraction order systems analysis is central to developing more ideal control schemes and understanding our world. Um, I won't say that it's the most ideal, but uh, I think it's interesting. Um, but the other interesting thing is that even though the fractional effects we're seeing um, the power law distributions and everything, they're, they're apparently ubiquitous. We're making attempts to isolate them and harness them. They've only been partially successful. It's actually really difficult to do this. Um, and I've been involved for the last couple of years in sort of making attempts and experimenting. Um, and I'll cover that. Also, I kind of like to do weird stuff, so <laughs> there's some of that in here, too. Um, this is the main project that's been um, that I've been involved with, and this was developed under an SBIR grant from the National Science Foundation in 2006 with um, my mentor, Dr. Gary Bohannon, in Bozeman, Montana. Um, and the idea is that th Heinrich Bode actually made this diagram. Um, and what he was going for is ideal control s system, in his opinion, had a constant phase. Um, so a constant phase element is something that what we we're working towards. Um, and digital discretizations of this uh, fractional order uh, function cannot be fully accurate. Now, they might be accurate enough, but our plan was to develop something that worked like this in a single element, um, and it turned out to work like this. Um, so Dr. Bohannon has a PhD in physics, and we worked with a PhD in uh, yeah, chemistry to come up with this. Um, and if you're interested in about what's inside it, I, I can talk about that later. But um, this is actually a pretty wide band. It's like seven decades. And it's, uh, let's see here. Here's the a Bode plot. This is combined magnitude and phase. But you can see the magnitude is decreasing. Um, and the phase is basically constant. It has a little bump here and then it starts going down. Um, so this is, uh, this took years to develop and uh, it works pretty well for what it is. The problem is the slope of this line and the corresponding phase angle, um, we couldn't find reliable ways to change those when we were constructing these factors. Um, now, Different people made different factors, and different factors had different angles, and different people made batches with different angles. So we know there's some kind of control there, but we couldn't get it above like 45, and we couldn't get it you know, around 10. Like it, we just couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this may be you know, a little <coughs> unexpected, but I'm just going to start talking about memristors. I I don't know how many of you heard about this. Um, Memristor was announced, uh, well, it's been around for you know, 30 years, the, the name and the idea has, but the actual element was announced last summer um, by researchers at Hewlett Packard. <coughs> it's kind of strange. They, it's a time varying resistor, is what they call it. The, uh, and the magnetic flux is a function of the amount of charge that has passed through the device, so it's a history dependent device. Meaning, the voltage and current curve is what they call a pinched hysteresis loop. It's linear, and then on the way back, it's linear the other way, and it's got this little bow tie. And, and they're saying that anything that exhibits this kind of curve is a memristor, by their definition. Mm -hmm. um, and I found this interesting because I had started my research here with fractors. So um, here's some of the, the memristor stuff that they've presented. This is their diagram, um, and I've added one of these surreptitiously the equations here, but um, these are basic physics equations. We've got voltage is the derivative in time of magnetic flux, and current is the time derivative of uh, electrical charge. Um, so they say that memristance is the derivative of flux in charge. So it actually has nothing to do with time, per se, but it does vary in time because Q can vary in time. 
Um, and then they say that voltage is member distance <laughs> times current. And if member distance is con constant, that is a resistor, meaning this is Ohm's law. Um, so this diagram, they say that the capacitor relates voltage and uh, charge. Current and voltage are related by a resistor. An inductor is magnetic flux and uh, current. And then finally, they claim that they filled in this corner here. And then resistor relates charge and magnetic flux. Um, so being that they work for HP, they're trying to do computery kind of stuff with it and use it as uh, digital logic and some other stuff. And um, They have access to really nice fab equipment. Um, and I don't, which will be clearly obvious pretty soon. Um, but I, I was kind of inspired by these equations. And I, I sort of present this with little to no explanation. But this is, this is my version of the diagram, which it's been shifted around and twisted. Um, but what I'm trying to say here is that the inductor, this else end, relates current and magnetic charge, much like theirs. And on the capacitor side, we've got voltage and charge. That's a capacitor. Um, but what I'd like to relay here is that I see this as kind of a number line, where the order of the operation performed on the signal in phase space, if you want to think about that, the phase, is linear. And the fractal that we've made lives in this CR sort of land. Um, now, when I put this down on 